I must, for myself, examine the reasons I left the comfort of Kaldahar for a journey to Deepingdale, the place of Isalor's birth. It is much like the assignments given to me by Uncle Oswald and Isalor himself. When Isalor left those lands near the Inner Sea for the spine of the world, he told his fellow druids he would send a student to replace him. This I told myself was why I left. But now, as I sit by the warmth of a fire in Mirabar, I realize what Isalor must have already known. I remember the details vividly. It started many years ago. The year was 1310 Dale Reckoning, when scouts from Burn Shander, the largest of the Ten Towns, first reported sighting goblin warbands. Within weeks, a river of goblins had flowed forth from the spine of the world, and above that wave of death sailed a banner bearing the monstrous heads of the Chimera. The militiamen of the Ten Towns would have been the Dale's only defense had the forces of fate been against Burn Shander. But Albrecht Dinsmore, the mayor of the town of Targos, urged the council to send a messenger south to the port cities of Lascan and Neverwinter. Lascan had problems of her own, but fearful of repercussions, the captains of Lascan devised a simple plan. Throughout the city, they posted notices promising wealth and fame. With lean work in the northern port city, many mercenaries and thugs were lured to the ships that would take them even further north. And so their ships crept through the sea of moving ice and onto the Shangarn River. They bragged of the deeds they would perform and the castles they would purchase. Lost in their reverie, they were blind to the throngs of goblins and orcs that lay in wait. Only a few ships survived the assault. Those that continued up the river watched as the town of Bremen burned. One of the ten towns had already fallen. Many wondered, as I often wonder, what difference only a few can make against so many and in the midst of such terrible circumstances. Welcome everybody to Let's Play Icewind Dale 2. This is attempt number two to do the Let's Play of this game. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad that you are tuning in to watch this Let's Play. If you're not new to my channel, then you may know that there is another Let's Play of Icewind Dale 2 that I started about uh, a year ago, and I never finished it. I got about halfway done with it, and it kind of got aborted, largely because I was sick and tired of all the technical problems I was having running it in Vista. But now I have Windows 7, and uh, it looks like it's running a lot better. I thought about uh, picking up that old one again, but then I decided to just scrap it and start a new one. And I think I'm going to try to have a little more fun with this one. So I'm going to create a party, but this time it's going to be an evil party. It's going to be a very evil party. In fact, it is going to be so evil, it is going to be the evilest men of the 20th century. Yes, that's right. This is a 20th century dictator themed party and as such we are going to be using custom portraits let's see I'll use that our first character will be Saddam Hussein race uh, no, he's a human I guess and uh, no special sub race <laughs> During this Let's Play, I'm going to try to explain some of the nuances of 3rd edition D&D rules if you aren't familiar with them. And if you are, well, this will be kind of like a review. So Saddam Hussein is our first character in our party. He's a male. He's an evil person, of course. Class. Now, 
what do I think of Saddam Hussein as? Uh, I kind of think of him like a warlord type of figure. You know, he's out there firing the AK-47 into the air, so I'm going to make him a barbarian. Alignment, chaotic evil. And abilities, he's, uh, well, let's see here. A barbarian's going to have really good strength and constitution. So let's give him that. And, uh, boy, what else do you have to have? You've got to have pretty good dexterity. Not, you know, spectacular, but it's got to be all right. And, uh, well, I guess this is a little bit out of roll here, but I'm going to knock his charisma down. Well, I can knock it all the way down. Because he won't be the leader of the party, and... I don't understand how he got in charge of a country anyway, but whatever. I've got myself some extra points to min-max with. And um, I'll tell you what, he doesn't really need intelligence either. Actually, just let's just make him completely frigging retarded. We're going to do some min-maxing here. Wisdom, I don't want it to be too bad because I want him to have good will saves. So uh, let's pump this up to 18. Pump those two up to 18. Pump this up to 14. Well, let's go up to 16 while we're at it. And, uh, well, I guess I'll put some into there. Because I don't want them to be completely devoid of skill points, I guess. Let's leave it at that. So he's got strength, constitution, dexterity. He's got to have good dexterity because he can't wear heavy armor at all. The heaviest armor he can wear is a chain shirt, so he's got to still have a good armor class. And uh, intelligence isn't paramount for a character like a barbarian, but barbarians do have a couple skills. So you don't want any of your characters to be too dumb. I guess this guy could afford it, but uh, I guess I decided to go ahead and not do that. <laughs> Um, intimidate, obviously, we're going to pump that up. This is Saddam Hussein, remember. Uh, boy, what else could he do? Uh, well, search. I guess search is good to have. Search means spotting traps and secret doors and stuff. I think that also, that helps you uh, spot invisible creatures. We're not going to choose wilderness lore, because different characters are going to have wilderness lore. And uh, that's basically it. I guess I might could give him some bluff. Oh, I've got two more. I'm going to give him bluff rank as well. All right, feats. Here are feats. <coughs> Excuse me. In case you're not familiar with feats, they are special abilities that you get. Everybody gets at least one to start off the game with, and since Saddam is human, he gets an extra one. A good one for uh, for a barbarian is extra rage. And uh, let me see, boy, what's another good one? He's gonna carry him carry around an axe, since he can't carry an AK-47 in this game. So he's gonna specialize in axes for now. And uh, power attack is another really good one. Any fighter or barbarian? Well, maybe not any fighter, but. Uh, you've got to have at least one guy, absolute least one guy in the party with power attack. Now, of course, I could choose... Let's see. When do I get another feat? Because there's another good feat here called... It's Only humans get it, I think. Or maybe you only get it on first level. What's the name of it? You basically, you get extra... You get a plus one to all of your... Saving throws. Luck of heroes. Oh, you've got to be human. <laughs> I'll take the axe specialization. And uh, what do I need for expertise? I'm not smart enough. What do I need for dirty fighting? Oh, that sounds like a good one. This guy sounds exactly like what somebody who would like dirty fighting. So when I choose power attack, I'm going to choose luck of heroes instead. 
And I'll choose Power Attack later. Power Attack definitely comes into play. Well, you know what? I hate to keep changing my mind, but I should choose Power Attack now so I can get Cleave next time. Cleave is a great is a great feat. Appearance. Um, not to do. Let's change his clothing color. Let's change that to green. Go military green. All right. Hmm. Male barbarian. What's that? Yeah, that's a little too dumb sounding. I am well, looks like I'm attack to arms. Ah, that's a pretty good one. Name. We all know his name. Saddam. Yes. Finish. All right, let's create our next character. Who might this be? <clears throat> well, everyone knows the most infamous man of the 20th century. And it is that man right there. <clears throat> Once again, human. And uh, normal human here. What's an ASMR? Uh, mm -hmm. Um... That's tempting, but no, I'm going to make him a human. Class, well, Hitler was known for his charisma and his ability to manipulate people. Very, very powerful man. And that means he's going to be a sorcerer. Alignment, neutral evil, very evil man. Abilities, okay, let us pump up charisma up to 18. And um, intelligence, we want him to have some smarts. Hitler was a very wise man. Or not wise, he was very intelligent. Very, very intelligent man. And uh, dexterity and strength, wisdom, not really going to pump those up. Constitution, well, the guy was wounded twice. So he must must have been kind of tough. Skills, let's see. Oh, he gets a lot of skill points. Uh, concentration is going to be key. Concentration helps you cast spells during combat. In case you get hit, you don't lose your don't lose your spell. Spellcraft is pretty good for identifying enemy spells when they cast spells on you. Knowledge arcana is pretty important. Um, I'll give him some diplomacy, but I don't plan on using a ton of diplomacy in this game. Feats left. Well, what should we do? Combat casting is something that every spellcaster should eventually get, but I'm not going to take it right now. I plan on keeping Old Adolf out of combat as much as possible because he cannot wear armor. Um, he was known for his ability to enthrall people, so... I'm going to say he's an enchanter. I'm going to give him spell focus, enchantment, and of course he was into war and destruction. So um, that also means I'll give him evocation as a specialty. And charm person seems like a very appropriate spell for Adolf Hitler. And so does uh, magic missile, I guess. So those are the two spells he can cast as a first level sorcerer. Oh, appearance. Uh, I guess that's all right. I'll stick with that. And what should I pick here? I'll bathe in the blood of my enemy. Oh, that's perfect for him. Watch my wrath unfurl. The name Adolf Hitler. 